Let's call our finance committee to order. Madam Clerk, would you read the roll, please? Here. Mr. Here. Mr. Welker. Here. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would move the approval of the minutes April 24th as proposed and the uh, agenda as well. We have a motion and second. And a second on the agenda. Of the, and minutes, any discussion or questions on either <laughs> of those items? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, same sign. That motion passes. Travel requests. One of you take, take those. those if I can. Uh, Mayor Hart, Michelle Weedner, CFO, to attend a uh, meeting with uh, Moody's Service Investor Services in Chicago, Illinois, May 4th through the 5th. The amount not to exceed $910. Michelle Weedner, Chief Financial Officer, with a meeting with the Iowa Governmental Audits, local government update. Destination uh, is an in office webcast or in Des Moines, Iowa, May 15th. Amount not to exceed $435. Michelle Wiener, Chief Financial Officer, meeting the Iowa Governmental Roundtable discussion. Destination is in Des Moines, Iowa. Dates May 16th. Amount not to exceed $360. Steve Holmbrecker, Director of Waste Management. Uh, meeting association meeting two, 2017 96th annual conference destination is Ottumwa, Iowa date June 9th <coughs> June 6th through the 9th amount not to exceed $650 Felicia Smith Nails is a meeting with neighborhoods USA 42nd annual conference on neighborhood concerns destination of Omaha Nebraska May 25th through the 26th and that amount not to exceed $760. And then uh, Steve Carey will uh, be instructing a confined space class uh, in Aurora, Brookings, South Dakota, May 7th through the 12th, amount not to exceed $1,000. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second on the travel requests. Any discussion or questions on any of those items? Um, Mr. Chairman, yep. can I ask? Uh, the fire chief to explain this uh, Steve Carey class, fine space class. Pat Treeler, fire chief. Uh, what's before you? There's a request for a thousand dollars not to exceed. That is for uh, travel costs and hotel and meals for Steve to uh, go to South Dakota to teach a class to a private customer. We're anticipating that. Uh, will net uh, approximately six thousand dollars from him teaching that class there'll be overtime involved which is not on the travel request but we factored that into the invoice okay well that's good to hear that we got people going more than 15 miles away being experts <laughs> yeah <laughs> they're a very good customer of ours yeah. any other questions hearing none all in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed same sign that motion passes pre -auths. Mr. Chairman, uh, pre authorizations to expend over $1,000. Central Garage, $2,812.50 plus $350 shipping and handling. Vertical boom for the 1998 Street Department backhoe. Engineering, $9,545.27 for the applicant fee for electric distribution extension agreement with Mid American Energy. Legal Department, $4,200 purchase of various publications. Leisure services, uh, $10,000. Advertising for three municipal golf courses. Leisure services, $6,756. Polyurethane lifting of concrete slabs. Leisure services, $2,160. Labor materials to plant annual flowers and 27 saucer style planters at River Loop Expo Plaza. Leisure services, $2,069. Scorecards for the golf course. MIS, $2,893.85 plus $17 shipping and handling. Extreme Networks, 48 port switch. Planning, $1,066. Asbestos inspection and samples, 1005 and 1017 Chalmers Avenue. <coughs> Police, $15,500 plus $120 shipping and handling. Purchase of six 
flashback three upgrade DVR kits for in-car camera systems. Sewer department, $14,481.36 plus $300 shipping and handling for a bearing kit, lower and upper mechanical seals, tear down and rebuild service and parts for number two Easton RWW pump. Sewer department, $7,886.81 plus $500 shipping and handling. Conveyor components and basic drive for dewatering building. Street department, $1,312.05. Replace cutting edges on blade and wing on Renault Grader. Traffic operations, $3,544 plus $135 shipping and handling. Spare parts, materials for traffic signals. And waste management, $5,300 plus $700 shipping and handling. Bulldozer rental for two weeks. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second on all the pre-auths. Any questions or discussion on any of those items? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Pull the same sign. Those motions pass. Budget line item amendments. We have three tonight, which are on file at the city clerk's office. And the bill's payment this week, $2,497,461.48. That's 2,497,461.48. Second. second. A motion a second on the bill's payment. Questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Bills are paid. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you. I probably really didn't need to use it, but I've never used it before, so I thought I'd just use it. That's, I'm sorry, that's my joke for today. <laughs> All right, so welcome everyone to our city council meeting this evening. Uh, Madam Clerk, could you please read the roll? Mr. Jacobs? Here. Mr. Morrissey? Here. Mr. Powers? Here. Mr. Lynn? Here. Mr. Amos? Here. Mr. Schmidt? Mr. Welker? Here. All right, uh, we have, uh, I think Mr. Schmidt will probably be joining us as well. Uh, right now, we have our moment of silence. Uh, either you can sit or you can stand. Uh, it's your option. Uh, if you would join me, Jerome, I know you can't probably stand, but you can sit as well. But if you would join me in a moment. Thank you. 
this week's pledge uh, will be led by uh, Ward 3 Council Member Patrick Morrissey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> all right. All right. We're joined by Mr. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion to approve the agenda as proposed and also the minutes of April 24th, 2017 regular session as proposed. Second. That motion has been made with a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. We have an agenda and some minutes. First up on our list is a number of proclamations. And the first I would like to call up is Justin Scott, Founder Director of Eastern Iowa Atheists. Uh, City of Waterloo, Iowa proclamation, whereas the applic application of reason more than any other means has proven to offer hope for human survival upon earth, improving conditions within the universe and cultivating intelligent, moral, and ethical interactions among people and their environments. And whereas those who wrote the Constitution of the United States of America, the basic document for governing the affairs of humankind within the United States, based its upon principles delineated within the philosophies distinguishing the historical age of reason. And whereas most citizens of the United States purport to value reason and its application, and whereas is it the duty and the responsibility of every citizen to promote the development and application of reason. Uh, now I therefore, Quentin Hart, Mayor of the City of Waterloo, do proclaim Thursday the fourth day of May as Day of Reason. So Justin, welcome. Um, you want to talk to us a little bit about what's taking place? Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Mayor Hart, appreciate you doing this once again. And uh, Day of Reason is a holiday for secular and atheist Americans around uh, the country, specifically here in the Waterloo, Black Hawk County area. On behalf of the atheist uh, community, as well as Eastern Iowa atheists, we appreciate you doing this. Um, so far, there have only been four mayors in all of Iowa that have agreed to do this, and this is now your second time doing it. So, in a nutshell, it boils down to when you come to work here to make decisions for the people of Waterloo, um, let your, your doctrine that you follow and your faith inspire you to do good works, but at the end of the day, it's, it's reason, it's logic, it's critical thinking that gets us to the best decisions for the residents of Waterloo. So. With that, we really, really appreciate this once again. All right, all right. Uh, thank you, Justin. And Jessica. And Jessica as well. So thank you so much. All right, all right. Thank you. Uh, now we have uh, Patrick Morrissey uh, for the Bicycle Month. Uh, he'll be receiving... Be Mike Knapp and Jessica Young as well. Okay, Mike Knapp and Jessica Young, would you please come up? City of Waterloo, Iowa Proclamation. Whereas the Cedar Valley Bicycle Collective is part of our growing community of bicycle enthusiasts. And whereas in 1956, the League of American Wheelmen designated the month of May as National Bicycle Month. The, Legion, the League of American Bicycle, Bicyclists is now the sponsor. And whereas bicycling is not only a recreational activity, but also an aerobic and toning exercise suitable for one's fitness and health regimen, as well as an energy-saving, cost-cutting, and environmentally friendly method of transportation. 
And whereas the city of Waterloo and the surrounding Cedar Valley is home to a beautiful trail system. And whereas Waterloo has been designated a bike friendly community, a complete streets community, and has adopted the city of Waterloo bicycle master plan. Now I therefore, Quentin Hart, mayor for the city of Waterloo, do hereby proclaim May 2017 as bicycle month, May 10th, 2017 as bicycle <coughs> school day, May 14th, 2017 as cyclo fem day, May 15th through the 19th, 2017 as bike to work week, May 19th, 2017 as bike to work day in Waterloo and encourage citizens to recognize the importance of bicycle safety and to participate in bicycling activities during the month of May as well as throughout the year. Uh, a lot of events. Uh, you want to tell us about those? Well, these With the mic? Sure. <laughs> uh, these are events that will be taking place not only in Waterloo but basically all over the United States and it's a way that um, bicycling enthusiasts um, are looking at trying to promote um, bicycling as an alternative to um, carbon fuel um, footprints um, and to promote family strengthening family ha activities by offering ways to families to have recreation together and just promote uh, overall better health and locally with the Bicycle Collective we work with a number of different groups in town to promote those ideas and specifically we try to keep um, s discarded bicycles out of the landfill and get them resalvaged and recycled and then reused so that um, we're not putting uh, trash in the landfill that shouldn't be there. Alright, all right. thank you so much and uh, I look forward to riding my bike to the council meeting on May 15th. You want? You? I was just going to say and, and I think uh, Council Member Pat Morrissey has something additional from the collective. Mr. Mayor, as, as part of the Cedar Valley Bike Collective uh, mission, one of them, as, as Mike was talking about, was to reduce uh, the amount of, uh, of landfill uh, used by people just throwing their, their uh, bicycle strikes, so on and so forth, into the landfill. And some of those bikes are through the recovery program. And Chief Troka, if you could please come here for a second. That's okay, Mr. Mayor. Uh, you already invited him. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you have been a partner, and Dave Bozen has worked with this for for quite uh, for five years now. And um, in the program that we have, as far as uh, repurposing old bikes, and uh, to that end, the Cedar Valley Bike Collective Board of Directors uh, voted unanimously to donate. Uh, voted unanimously to donate $500 to your um, body camera fund. So thank you very much. Thank you. And, and, and we hope that our partnership continues. Yes, it will. Thank you. All right. Uh, congratulations and thank you all. Look forward to a busy next couple of weeks on the bike. All right. Thank you. All right, next we have a proclamation for Latino Heritage Day, and I would like to call up Maria Maldonado and Kent Shanko. How are you? Absolutely. Come on, you want to? How are you? Some good jelly beans at my office. <laughs> and Twizzlers, uh, some of the council That's members. Need it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. City of Waterloo, Iowa proclamation. Whereas, according to the U.S. Census Bureau data, more than 5% of Waterloo residents <coughs> identify themselves as being of Hispanic or Latino descent. And whereas the city of Waterloo is proud to be home to a broad and diverse Hispanic and Latino community that contributes greatly to the social, cultural, economic, and political strength of this community. And whereas Hispanic and Latino citizens represent leaders in politics, business, education, the arts, entertainment, the military, science, technology, athletics, medicine, and law, and are critical to building a strong nation for future generations. 
and whereas we commemorate the essential contributions, sacrifices, and accomplishments that Hispanic and Latino Americans have made to the United States throughout our nation's history, and whereas as we build community that is open and welcoming to all, a special celebration has been planned to be held at the Riverloop Amphitheater on May 6th. Now, therefore, I, Quentin Hart, Mayor for the City of Waterloo, do, proclaim, do hereby proclaim May 6, 2017, it as Latino Heritage Day. So, Maria, tell us about what's taking place. On May 6, uh, Viridian, as well as Tyson, Waterloo Center for the Arts, are hosting an event to celebrate all Latinos and Hispanics in our community, in our area, to celebrate all those differences and have all of us come together and welcome the rest of our community to come and enjoy food. Uh, we'll have activities for the children. It's May 6th from 11 to 4 at the River Loop. Um, we've got live music. Um, we have uh, Paranderos will be playing as well as Mariachi Los Amigos de ISU. So we'll have uh, some great uh, cultural music, um, there'll be uh, cultural foods to sample as well, um, as you mentioned, kids' activities including inflatables and crafts, um, just a great day for all of us to get together and start enjoying um, our great outdoor spaces downtown and celebrate um, the culture of our community. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, thank you so much, Maria, for your advocacy over the years and we thank you all for putting together uh, an event that will allow us to be able to celebrate who we are as a community. So thank you so much. All right. And last but definitely not least, uh, I would like to invite Jerry Thornsberry, Leslie uh, Carrie and Mike Henning up to the front. Come on up, don't be scared. How are you? Good. You Great. All right. Okay. City of Waterloo, Iowa proclamation. Healthy so so. So soils, I thought it was souls are full of life. <laughs> Healthy soils are full of life. And whereas fertile soil and clean water provide us with our daily sustenance. And whereas effective conservation practices have helped provide us a rich standard of living. And whereas our security depends upon healthy soil and clean water. And whereas stewardship calls for each person to help conserve these precious resources. Now therefore I, Quentin Hart, Mayor for the City of Waterloo, do hereby proclaim the week of April 30th to May 7th, 2017 as Soil and Conservation Week. So very important time as well. So Jerry, you want to tell us about that? Sure. Leslie, do you want to take the proclamation? Sure. Yes, this week is being celebrated around the United States and it is so critical that we pay attention to the resources we have. Our healthy soil and our clean water is our objective. Um, our district, the Soil and Water Conservation District, was formed in 1945 after the Dust Bowl and blown our soil to Washington, D.C. And we've been working over 72 years at this mission. And um, we have five elected volunteer commissioners. Lee Bader, who farms near Jessup. Dustin Sage out Dunkerton Way. Jenny Trent, who works at the Waste Management Center at UNI. And Sherman Lundy, who is a member of the Soil and Water Cons the Soil State Soil Committee. And he is also a farm manager for BMC Aggregates. And Leslie Carey here is our conservation assistant, who is the glue that holds our office together. And Mike Kenning is one of our new assistant commissioners, and he's been very active with Orange Elementary School, working with the children there in um, conservation practices. The uh, one thing I wanted to mention is that we had a farmer come forward and create a group to work on Black Hawk Creek 
and so we're going to be working a conservation project there. And Mr. Morrissey, I wanted to let you know that the Greenbrier area that you and Sherman and others talked about, we have put that watershed issue into the Huck 12 project in the Middle Cedar. So we listened and we realized that there, <laughs> there is a, an issue going on there. Thank you. And I'm, I'm guessing that that particular issue in Greenbrier will prove to be very interesting given our changing weather patterns that are directly impacting the drainage of groundwater. The water that is moving unseen throughout the watershed. And we're seeing this more and more with the weather events that we're having. So thank you. <coughs> Leslie, would you like to say something? No, Mike? <laughs> you said it all. Awesome. All right. <laughs> thank, you, thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much, Jerry. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you, Mike, uh, for making a difference in our environment. Uh, we appreciate your work and your service as well. It is now time for oral presentations. Uh, is there anyone in the audience that would like to address the city council to let us know your, what's on your mind and your thoughts? Please come forward, state your name and address and your concern. David Dreyer, 3145 West 4th Street. Mr. Mayor, city council. Uh, the paper spoke of three lots we bought from KW Bell. I only remember one for $58,500. Where are the other two, and how much did we pay for them? Any other questions? No, but I have another comment. Okay, let us hear it. Um, I listened to you on KWWL today. And this blue can thing is not dead, Mr. Mayor. Uh -huh. And I thought your answer was kind of weak. No, you know what? He. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Dreyer, for your. Well, you're welcome. For your. For your uh, I was the day that called criticism. in. I, it makes no makes no difference. Thank you so much. Uh, right now we're talking about some lots at KWWL, three lots versus two lots versus one lots. Uh, does anyone have a response to what, what he's talking about? <laughs> Bill Anderson, Committee Planning Development Director. As you may recall, back when we worked with uh, KWWL for their project, uh, we were looking at not only the renovation of their building, but looking at uh, how we could help kind of a whole block and a half area redevelop. Um, the uh, original development agreement had the offer um, for the city to buy more land from them as they had several parcels in that area. Um, we ended up buying the lot that is for sale tonight. Um, we're buying it and then reselling it um, for the church's investment. There was also some lots um, that the uh, American Legion sat on that we acquired for the project and they relocated to uh, downtown Waterloo. All right, That's you. two. All right. You, are, you just indicated you have nothing else to say. Thank you. No, no. I Next said there person. was. Thank you for cutting me off, sir. Thank you for the compliment. Is there anyone else that would like to address the city council? Going a second time. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file oral comments. Second. That motion has been made with second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oops, we forgot monthly council reports. Um, does anyone have anything to report? Um, I guess I'd just like to maybe give a shout out to a few department heads or yeah, department heads and their employees. Uh, because of the disconnect problem over on uh, off of Maynard and Upton with uh, between uh, Hughes and Valley Drive, there's an incredible amount of water being pumped in these backyards. Engineering and building department came out and evaluated it and gave some really good alternatives to the neighbors in terms of and so they're the neighbors now are investigating what they can do in terms of hiring a contractor to 
help uh, fix the issue uh, with traffic uh, department Sandy and her team uh, they're working diligently towards the concerns of progress in Green Hill that's very positive movement they've been here off and on uh, and the police department for providing extra attention in the neighborhoods along 4th Street Kimball that area there seems to be some vandalism going on I uh, get pretty much daily reports of different things um, and also on Green Hill and progress extra attention in the traffic and speed <coughs> so thank you and it's been good work by all the, a lot of departments all right anyone else mr. mayor mr. Morrissey I just wanted to um, uh, say that um, the last ward meeting that uh, uh, I had at the uh, public library was on the 19th and uh, it was uh, there was lively discussion we didn't really have any uh, speakers there that time but I, I'm cons uh, continually amazed at uh, the different topics that people give up it's, it's informative to me um, it's one of the reasons why the Greenbrier um, um, water uh, ground level uh, or groundwater situation uh, came up as an example but there's other things that come up here like the Broadway corridor which I mentioned to you briefly um, and what hopefully can happen as far as that area being looked at as far as some redevelopment as well um, and uh, people might think that those ward meetings uh, which by the way the the 41st one will be on May 25th are just times when people complain no it's not it's it's where people share what's going on within the within the ward and they are uh, I, I think they're well attended um, quite frankly the uh, the other thing I wanted which is not it's, it's just city related was that last week we had a discussion about the CIP program and one of the votes that was taken was an amendment there was a, a move to have an amendment which got defeated uh, about this twenty thousand dollars and uh, I don't know if anybody else in the council followed up on that but I did to make sure that what I had said was correct and in fact it was correct I talked to Wayne Castle and that twenty thousand dollars is uh, uh, hopefully devoted to um, infill sidewalks at uh, either uh, or uh, Hoover or uh, Kittrell uh, so the kids have a safer safer route to school that voted, was that voted on last week? Yes, it was, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Land. Mr. Mayor, um, Councilman Schmidt and I went to a couple of veterans' events on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. They're great events, one at the Grout, pretty fancy, and one at the American Legion. American Legion was a um, pretty well-attended event, and I thought to myself while I was there, we have to find a way, maybe, as a city, and maybe get our partner across the street, Cadet de Belle, and somehow help them with this roof they're trying to raise money for. And I would just kind of, besides announcing what we did, make the request that can we explore some opportunities to assist them? Because they got to replace that roof. And that's what they're raising the money for the other night. And um, I think they're well on their way, but we should be able to help them a little bit more. <coughs> All right. All right. Anyone else, Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. So about a week ago, we announced a chance for the people to get involved with our community and um, to uh, give us their input. And I'd uh, like to report back. I've had a lot of positive calls about people wanting to be part of a citizens advisory committee. Um, just to give their ideas or input on how we can make Waterloo a better place to work and live and so Moving forward with that um, and so this Wednesday May 3rd at 5 we're going to meet Invitations open to all 727 Water Street so 22. 722 Water Street. I apologize. So uh, this Wednesday at 5 p.m. So we just want to make sure everybody knew they were invited to attend as well All right. Thank you um, just one quick announcement. Uh, May 12th, uh, we are having a Walk Waterloo event uh, downtown. Uh, we have, over the last 10 years or so, had a lot of things take place in our downtown that are positive. Uh, so we'll start at Lincoln Park at about 515. 
um, take about a mile walk to see uh, the progress and then where progress is going to happen and we'll end up back in Lincoln Park um, for the first Friday Lou. So it's a partnership between Blue Zones, Main Street, Convention and Visitors Bureau and other entities. Um, just a great way to celebrate. If you need more information, uh, you can go to the Facebook page, uh, Blue Zones Facebook page, or you can contact the mayor's office at 291-4301 um, to find out how to participate, but just a healthy way to celebrate exactly the progress that we've made. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Just one little follow-up to uh, Councilman Jacobs' comments. Uh, Councilman Lynn, Councilman Jacobs, and I are the three that are kind of uh, trying to shepherd that committee to get it started, and then we're going to be stepping away from it. But for those that can't make the meeting Wednesday night, uh, if they go on the city website, they can get the contact information for Councilman Jacobs or Lynn or myself. So I just want to point that out. All right. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda. That's items one through five, and within that are the bills payment. Bills payment this week, $2,497,461.48. That's 2, 497, 461.48. Second. A motion has been made with the second. Uh, council questions? Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I have a couple questions. I guess more, more of a comments. Okay. On the travel request, I added up the balance in all the accounts there. It's about $74,000 with, you know, only two months left in the fiscal year. Um, and to put that in perspective, that would have knocked off about three and a half cents on the levy rate had we quit traveling. Okay. And the other question, not question, I guess, comment I, has, I have on the rec recommendation for appointment of an a director. Um, I really think we should have a hiring freeze until we have some kind of reorganization plan in place or at least have talked about it um, because we may be st stuck with department heads that now we don't need or aren't going to fit in the scheme of things. The other thing, I don't like the process and that we really don't get complete information and I don't care about every, I mean I care about everybody we hire but especially department heads. I think the council should be more involved <coughs> in, in the hiring, uh, get information. I know the complaint has always been that the process is kind of screwed up because all of a sudden we're notified on you know Thursday afternoon that we're gonna hire a uh, uh, high-priced employee or an important position in the city. And I'd just like us to maybe revise that process. So you want information about the candidate because the, I think we gave you a, for this position, um, in an attempt to try to provide you more information, we outlined the entire process, but prior to us even going out for approval, we voted on it. Yes, I know, but um, it just seems like, and I really appreciate, and I, I told Mr. Rodemeyer that I appreciate that memo he sent, so we have much more. Um, I would like to see a resume. I would like to see the price we're paying and all that stuff. But um, I just think before we make the offer, between the time we interview, and maybe we could be in the loop on who we're going to interview, and then after the interviews, maybe a little discussion about how that worked and what you're going to recommend or what the committee, whatever committee it is, is going to recommend then we would feel much more comfortable when it came, like tonight, to vote on it. Right. That's, that's all I'm asking. Can you and I sit down and have a conversation? Absolutely. I, I, uh, this week is probably a bad week, but I'd like to sit down with just you and I. Sure. And then we'll talk through, Absolutely. talk through some of these things. I would appreciate it. Any other comments? Madam Deputy Clerk. Mr. Morrissey. Yes. Mr. Powers. Yes. Mr. Lynn. Yes. Mr. Amos. Yes. Mr. Schmidt. I'll vote yes on everything except item number one B four, the new director position, and as I have been consistently uh, voting 
against those appointments as we continue to talk about possible reorganization. This has absolutely nothing to do with the position and absolutely nothing to do with that individual. Uh, it's just the whole process and concept, so I'll, I'm voting against that one item. Mr. Welker? Yes. Mr. Jacobs? Yes and all, except no one, one before. All right, thank you. That item passes. We have uh, Mr. Dunn in the audience today. Would you please uh, stand for folks? Uh, we want to welcome you to the city of Waterloo. Um, we're absolutely anxious to move forward, get you in here. We thank uh, Mr. Rotemeyer for his commitment over the course of time as interim, but we look forward to a long, healthy, prosperous partnership. So thank you. All right, as we move forward, uh, number two. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I, um, the, I move that the hearing for the purchase of one salt brine blender be proposed due to timing constraints. Does that need a second in a row? Second. 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 I don't believe so. No, just to read into the record, I believe. All right, all right. So thank you, Mr. Land. Uh, number three. Mr. Schmier. Mr. Schmidt. Item number three is a uh, motion to receive and file proof of publication notice of public hearing, and that's for the sale and conveyance of city-owned property located at 525 East 4th Street, also known as 525 Franklin Street, in the amount of $58,500 to First Presbyterian Church and up to $2,000 in closing costs. Second. A motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, the hearing is now open. Is there anyone that would like to speak uh, on behalf of this item or have questions about it? Going a second time. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to close the hearing. Second. second. Motion has been made with the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing is closed. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to adopt a resolution authorizing the sale and conveyance of a certain tract of land known as 525 East 4th Street, also known as 525 Franklin Street, in the amount of $58,500 and up to $2,000 in closing costs, and authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute necessary documents. Second. A motion has been made with the second. Council, any questions? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Schmidt. Um, I intend to vote for this motion uh, as I did for a similar motion, uh, I think within the last year or two for Queen of Peace Church. Uh, I did get a call today from a citizen basically asking why we, uh, the city is supporting this when the city opposed the previous uh, <coughs> proposal. So I said, that's a great question. I'll put that question out there and see who'd like to answer it. So the proposal on the parking lot or for a similar situation, uh, uh, another situation <coughs> regarding... The situation was the parking lot at Queen of Peace Church that they offered to buy for the same okay. value as what this church is doing. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. Uh, but there, the city council turned them down. So yeah. the question was, why did we do that there? I mean, is that was that the city council that voted or was the staff? Staff recommendation not to do it? Uh, I'm pretty sure the council voted, 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 voted I voted like you did on that. I, I, three, three I voted against it. I did too. Yeah. So I don't know what the rest of the council, other council members are gone. What did you vote that? I voted to, uh, to sell. not sell it to Queen of Peace. Would you, you like to expand why? why, why you tell us why. What? Would you like to expand well, why? 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 There's a development agreement. I can read all your minds. Why the council members voted against it? Um... We did have a, uh, with, the, with the former project, we did have a developer ready to build. Um, with this project, um, we were buying it as part of the overall KWL project. We do not have a builder ready to go on this, so there is not an eminent project. Um, but because of the similarity to the other project, we did take it to Building and Grounds Committee, and the Building and Grounds Committee did recommend moving ahead and selling it um, as we are proposing tonight. Well, and again, I don't think anybody's questioning this. What they're questioning is the previous, why you didn't, not you, but why that land was not sold to that church at comparable value. I know some of the discussion for the previous one, um, we did have a, a developer ready to build. Um, they did have more parking um, abutting or adjacent to them, um, to, the, uh, 
to the north of that and they had another parking lot to their northwest of the other um, I believe at the time too there was even some discussion about it had snowed recently and no one had been using the parking lot at all for the church purposes so it was deemed as a good redevelopment site that would not impair the use of the church hey, Mr. Mayor um, uh, I, I uh, remember this this was one of the first few things I voted on when I came on council and I, Tom was uh, just coming on council too at that time and uh, um, the issue revolved around um, selling it to the church or selling it to a developer where there was going to be uh, more uh, revenue coming into the city at that point in time so to me it was a a revenue based decision that I made that uh, voted for that development agreement to go through over the church which which added no revenue base to the city that was so that my was recollection that discussion at that time and the vote all right any other comments mr mayor mr jacobs this this is a great thing for the wall in the street neighborhood and i fully support it i've been over looking at it and i, and I really would hope that we would get behind it and support it. i think it fits in perfectly with what we're trying to do there um and so i'm gonna support it and it also goes along with the redevelopment efforts they've already made to that portion of the building the entrance right. way but any other questions madam deputy clerk uh, Mr. Powers? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Amos? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welker? Yes. Mr. Jacob? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. All right, thank you. Uh, can someone take four and five, please? Mr. Mayor? Mr. Morrissey? I'd like to make a motion to adopt a resolution approving the notice of intent for NPDES coverage under general permit to the Iowa Department of Natural Resources for the University Avenue and Midway Drive reconstruction and authorized mayor to execute said document. And number five, a resolution authorizing the Traffic Operations Department to hire Bolton and Mink of Cedar Rapids, Iowa to develop two grant applications for Iowa Clean Air Attainment Program for the installation of fiber optics and a traffic adaptive system on Amesboro Avenue from San Martin Drive to Downing Avenue and on Broadway Street from Park Road to Airport Boulevard for a total cost of $7,200. Second. A motion has been made with a second. Um, Sandy, you want to talk about traffic adaptive system for us? Sandy Grego, traffic operations superintendent. Um, if you can. Uh, oh, sorry. Okay. Don't break um, it. This is what we're going for is to have um, this company do a grant application for us. And um, it'll be from Ainsboro. It, it'll go to the Iowa DOT for Iowa Clean Air Attainment Program, which is ICAP. And this, in turn, will um, allow us funding if if we receive the grants um, to put in fiber optics and have a traffic adaptive system from on Ainsboro from Sam Marnin into Downing. Um, a traffic adaptive system is where the signals will adapt to traffic flow. Um, traffic timing will change during the day um, so we don't have to go out and adjust it will automatically adjust due to say um, heavy volumes like five o'clock at night um, it will automatically um, have the controllers adjust to the traffic to keep traffic moving smoothly um, the other one is on Broadway from Park Road to um, Airport Boulevard which will give us fiber optics from there out to basically almost the airport and it'll do the same thing for traffic all right all right thank you uh, any other questions madam deputy clerk mr lynn yes mr amos yes mr schmidt yes mr welker yes mr jacobs yes mr morrison yes mr powers yes motion to motion for adjournment second May with the second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you, Mr. Amos.